Hello, so we're going to have a look at a buffer stock scheme. So first of all, let's start off by defining what a buffer stock scheme is. So a buffer stock scheme is intended to stabilise the price of a commodity by buying excess supply in periods when supply is high and selling and then selling the, st the stock on the market when supply is low. Okay, so that's our definition of a buffer stock scheme. So just to recap, a buffer stock stock scheme is intended to stabilize the price of a commodity and the way a buff stock scheme works in order to stabilize the price of a commodity is that uh, a government would buy up excess supply so when supply is plentiful so when there's a large quantity supplied the government would buy up that excess uh, uh, supply and then they would store it and when supply is low they would then release the stocks that they had previously bought up onto the market and by buying when there's excess supply by, by buying the excess supply and when there is high supply and releasing uh, the stock that they have when supply is low that should allow to stabilize the price and we'll have a look uh, with regards to our diagram how that works so just obviously we said a buffer stock scheme uh, is intended to stabilize the price of a commodity just to recap what we mean by a commodity is when we talk about a commodity we're thinking about uh, raw materials um, so we often see buffer stock schemes used for agricultural products Uh, such as uh, wheat, for example. Uh, and the reason that we use them for these products uh, is particularly because they have uh, the price elasticity of demand is price inelastic. And we have the price elasticity of supply uh, it tends to be inelastic as well. Okay, and the, just to recap, the reason we said that obviously uh, commodities such as wheat, for example, have an inelast uh, are price inelastic. We said the reason why that was is because uh, wheat is a necessity, and we said that the price elasticity of supply again was inelastic, and the reason for that was that it takes a long time to grow. You can't suddenly respond to a change in the price of wheat immediately because you can plant the seed but the actual wheat is only going to be uh, come to harvest a year or so later so there's a time lag there and that time lag means that the price elasticity of supply of these products is inelastic so what type of market failure do we use a buffer stock scheme to correct uh, a buffer stock scheme use, is used to correct the market failure of price instability or as is also known uh, volatile prices so a buffer stock scheme can be used uh, when to correct the market failure associated with price instability uh, or otherwise known as volatile prices okay uh, and the reason 
uh, there's another video on this that explains why uh, volatile prices, uh, particularly with regards to commodities, uh, is a is a significant issue and therefore needs to be addressed. And that's why we're going to have a look at a buffer stock scheme. Okay, so let's have a look at now at drawing our diagram with regards to a buffer stock scheme. This is probably one of the more technical diagrams that we're going to draw. Uh, so it's really important that we understand how to draw this. So like with all the diagrams, we're going to start off with our axes. And quite simply, this is going to be price and quantity. So nothing uh, new there. Right. So what we're going to add in, we're going to add in our supply curve. In, our, in this scenario, our supply curve is going to be perfectly inelastic. And we're going to label this supply curve S1. We're going to draw another perfectly inelastic supply curve. And that is going to be S2. Okay. What we're going to draw now is we're going to draw in a uh, demand curve. We're going to make this as, as steep as steep to try and represent the obviously the price inelastic element. So that's a quite a steep uh, demand curve. There we go. Quite a steep demand curve there, and we'll label that D. Okay. Right. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in uh, some prices. Or some uh, prices. Yeah. So we'll just draw in a dashed line here. And we'll continue that past our supply curve. And again, up here, we will again draw another dashed line which we extend beyond okay and what we're going to do is we're going to label these prices on our y-axis so we're going to label this minimum price and we're going to label this maximum price So some of you may be thinking, hang on a minute, we, why are we labelling this minimum price and why are we labelling that maximum price? Because when we looked at price controls, obviously they were the, they were the opposite way round. So obviously when we were looking at price uh, controls, so we're looking at minimum and maximum pricing, we're referring to a maximum price as a price ceiling and we were referring to a minimum price as a price floor. OK, but when we look at our buffer stock scheme, we ignore those uh, definitions of a minimum and maximum price. In this, in a buffer stock scheme, what we purely take the maximum price is, is we're saying the price cannot go any higher. Uh, we're not going to accept a price higher than this amount. And here we're saying we're not going to accept a price uh lower than this amount so minimum price we want the price to be at that price or above it but it can't be any higher than the maximum price it can be the maximum price but it can't be any higher than that okay so we've got these limits here minimum maximum price so basically the reason why we've added these this minimum price and maximum price is in order to stabilize uh, the price. So what we're trying to do by keeping the price in between this maximum and minimum price, we're trying to stabilize the price and keep it within this limit. And therefore, by keeping it within the limit, we're trying to address the market failure of price instability, otherwise known as volatile prices. So the reason for the minimum and maximum price are in order to keep the price within a certain range and therefore limit price instability. So what we can do, we can just add some extra bits of annotation onto our diagram. So here, S1, we can label that quantity Q1. At S2, we can label that quantity Q2. So we can add in some prices now. So... 
what we can look at here is we can see uh, that there is an equilibrium point here where S, the curve S2 intersects the demand curve. Okay, uh, so we can label that price uh, P2. Makes sense with the notation of 2 there. And therefore, we can draw our equilibrium on. So at that point, we have an equilibrium of P2, Q2. And similarly, we have an equilibrium uh, here as well. We'll label that P1. Uh, and there we go. Do we have P1, Q1, and we have P2, Q2. So they are demonstrative of uh, two equilibrium points that we have in our diagram. So